Hi, y'all. I'm Joe, your host in Cannabis Lifestyle Guide. And I'm joined today on Roll With Me with Derek Gilman. He is the managing director of Gongier. Derek, thank you so much for joining us on Roll With Me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Joe. I think we're going to have some fun today, huh? I think so. And you're all lit up with that light behind you. You look like, you know, Cannabis Jesus back there. We're going to get some good stuff out of you today. <laughs> Uh, I think so. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yes. And so for people that don't necessarily know what the Gongier program is, I think just from the beautiful play on words, they can probably get an idea that it is a um, similar to a sommelier in wine. But um, tell us just kind of briefly what a Gongier is. You nailed it, Joe. Uh, it's exactly what it is. Uh, the Gangier, uh Cannabis Certification Program is akin to the Wine Sommelier Certification Program. It's uh, no different than, uh, you know, the beer Cicerone uh, or a cigar Catador or a cheesemonger or a coffee cupper. Um, these are all Epicurean industries that have trained professionals to assess quality and guide the experience of uh, the customers. I love that. And I had uh, Max Simon with Green Flower, who's also one of the founders of Gangier. When he was on the on the podcast, he was telling me about it. And it's just, it's so intensive. It's like when you finish this program, you pretty much know everything about cannabis, I believe. And I was inspired um, to get myself a jeweler's loop so that I could practice and maybe develop some of my Gangier skills with you today. So I love that. Um, That's great. Yeah. So what um, legal cannabis flower have you uh, brought to the party today? I have brought some of my homegrown uh, from my personal medical garden here in Ojai, California. Uh, Sun-grown, full season, living soil, um, and a variety. Um, it's a new cross that I made, actually. I had was kind enough, uh, I, was gen I was fortunate enough to be gifted some uh, seeds from Mel Frank uh, earlier this year. Uh, some seeds that he had gotten from a friend in um, upstate New York, a variety that he said was called perfume. So I took that perfume um, I actually had it last season, to correct myself, uh, and I dusted it with some pollen that I had. I crossed the Mac with the Royal Kush and had this beautiful mail, collected that pollen. Um, I dusted this little plant of this perfume that I grew out from Mel's seeds, and this year I'm growing out that cross, and that's what I have here in my jar today. We're going to smoke. Very nice. So what have you named it? <laughs> Uh, this one is as yet to be named, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I just harvested it about a month ago. So it's just starting to hit its sweet spot in the cure. And I like to crawl into it and kind of feel what the flavor profile is. What's that experience yeah. profile before, you know, putting my finger and giving it a name? Yeah, you got to meet that baby before you can name it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> get for it, sure. Get it. Yeah. Well, so I have a lot of friends that travel to California, either from Canada or the rest of the country. And, you know, they go nuts in the dispensary. And then when they leave town, they gift me with the flower that they have left. So most recently left on my doorstep was, um, this is apple fritter, I believe. Yes. Apple fritter from King's Garden Royal botanicals. I've never smoked it. I don't, I trust the connoisseur who gave it to me, but I also brought out some mom's weed from Huckleberry Hill Farms. And because I wanted to look at something that came from the dispensary through the 
the jeweler's loop, and then something that came from my friend's garden. So this is the home grow, and this is from the dispensary. That should be an excellent and fun comparison. So um, yeah, let's get our jeweler's loop out there. Yeah. yeah, so talk me through this. How the... I have my Gangier jeweler's loop here, which is a, uh, a 10X uh, triplet lens jeweler's loop. Um, it's really nice, high quality lens. Um, so what you want to do with your jeweler's loop, um, typically um, you want to make sure that the logo, if there's a logo on the case, you want the logo to be facing you, mm -hmm. just in case it happens to be a, a, a fancy triplet lens and that will only work in one direction. Okay. So yeah. Okay. And then what you want to do is we want to get our sample. We want to always uh, carefully handle it. So we hold it by the stem. Okay, um, we then bring our jeweler's loop up to about a half an inch from our eye. I like to use my thumb knuckle and kind of rest it on my cheekbone to stabilize it. Oh gosh, but yeah, the, that's close. Okay, the closer, oh, yeah. the closer the loop is to your eye, the larger your field of view. And then you just bring the sample up until it comes into focus. That's so beautiful. And it's just a whole nother world in there. It is. Such and with a, micro beauty. And with a nice high quality jeweler's loop, it's going to allow you to number one, begin to see whether or not there's any contaminants on your flower. And that's the first thing we do with Gangiers when we're um, going through our appearance evaluation is we inspect for contaminants. Because if we find some mold or, or something particularly offensive, there's really not a whole lot of reason to, to go forward with the assessment. And so right. we make sure that we inspect every part of that flower and we're looking for debris, disease. We're looking for maybe little hair, um, you know, from an animal. We're looking for insect parts, um, insect remains, insect feces, maybe from a caterpillar. Ugh. Mold, mildew, PM, all sorts of stuff, unfortunately, could be on a cannabis flower. So that's why we use the jeweler's loop to inspect it. And you can but, really see into those little crevices. Yeah. And so in addition to contaminants, we then begin to inspect for trichome density. We look at the coverage of the trichomes over that flower. And then we not only just look for trichomes, we also look to see if the glands of those trichomes are intact. So trichomes have a stalk and they have a gland. There's actually six types of trichomes, but the ones that we like, the glandular trichomes, have a stalk and a gland. And it's that gland on top, that little ball, that contains all of the cannabinoids and terpenes, all the flavor and aroma and all those compounds that give us the effects. Um, so all these little beautiful crystals everywhere that you see that just looks like glass on here. That's what I'm looking at. If the flower had been properly handled, then yes, you're going to find all those beautiful little crystals on there. However, there's a possibility, especially if you're getting something from a dispensary these days, that the flower may not have been properly handled. And again, it's another reason why we like, we like to look and inspect with the jeweler's loop, because it, those glands are really fragile, those trichome glands. And once the flower has been dried, they break off super easily. And there's lots of stages through the processing after the flower has been harvested. There's trimming, there's packaging. Um, so there's lots of opportunity if someone's a little rougher than they should be for those trichomes to come off. So when we're evaluating for, for quality and we're really looking, you know, to, to put a fine point on that quality when we're a gangier, um, we're going to inspect at the highest level. So when you grow at home and then you're um, trimming, do you do just that very gentle farmer cut and leave it alone and then just do more manicuring at the time when you smoke it? I tend, um, I will harvest um, branches individually, uh, hang them for a period of five to seven days in my conditioned drying room. I don't do any bucking before I do the drying. I don't take off any of the fan leaves. Um, but five to seven days of that branch in the drying room and it's about ready. Um, to be broken down. And I break down all of the, 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 um, the individual flowers, the individual nugs, 
And then I clean off all those fan leaves and a significant portion of the sugar leaves. I do tend to take it to that, what I call A grade state before going into my curing buckets. Okay. I always like yeah. to know what everybody's style is. All right. Yeah, for sure. So let's let's uh, start breaking things up to roll. Do you have a certain We're ready to roll? Do you have a certain technique that you use to um, um, when you're breaking the flour apart so that you're not um, damaging it? For sure. Um, I tend to use a grinder. Uh, I prefer a stainless steel grinder as opposed to aluminum. Um, I'm just real paranoid about micro flakes of aluminum getting in something I'm consuming. Um, most grinders are fine. Um, but like I said, I'm just a little more paranoid, so I like stainless steel. Um, I also like this particular grinder. I'm not sure if you can see this, but Let me make you the, um, the blades are really wide on this. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it gives me a coarser grind. Um, and I prefer a coarser grind uh, when I'm rolling joints. Because uh, what I find is that um, with a coarser grind, we, we talked about those trichomes earlier that contain all of the, uh, you know, those glands with all the cannabinoids and flavor and aroma. Uh, so when you have a, a coarser grind, those chunkier bits tend to preserve those trichomes a bit more as opposed to a finer grind which is going to expose more surface area. And then as you're drawing the heat through that flower, you could potentially start to vaporize off some of those trichomes before you combust them. And mm -hmm. so with that chunkier grind, as, as it begins to combust, there's these little flavor pockets that are preserved. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's I my dig reasoning. that. All right. I like it. I get super geeky and detailed on this stuff, Joe. Well, <laughs> you're in the right me. place. <laughs> cool. You're in the uh, right place. Yeah. So and I'm going to some rabbit holes. When I um, zoomed out and saw your setup, I love the way your shot is framed. Oh, like you literally you. have a frame around you. I, <laughs> I tried to put a little thought into it before coming here. Yeah. Today. I dig it. Well, you know, you have, if people haven't seen high roller, um, that or high roller, is it plural? Um, high rollers. That's a show that Derek, Derek has on YouTube. Is that through green flower? Where is the channel that that's found on? Uh, it's on, uh, the Ganjie channel on okay. YouTube. You All can right. find, uh, many high rollers episodes with guests such as, uh, Swami Chaitanya, Frenchie cannoli, um, Dank Duchess, Kyle Cushman, got a lot of fun guests on there. And we like to go through, yeah, how people like to, their, their tools and techniques as well. Yes. I am a joint rolling novice, really just started trying this, this year. Um, OCB has uh, sponsored my education. So, um, <laughs> so when I grind, if you notice, I just did one half turn one way and one half turn the other, and I'm done. Okay. So I don't you sit here. Up. Yeah. I don't, well, I mean, not necessarily screwed up because it's a personal <laughs> preference thing for sure. Yeah. Um, Swami loves a finer grind. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Swami um, also smokes logs. He's, <laughs> he gets about an eighth into those Swami joints of his. Yeah. He's a, I love being around when he's sharing a joint. Yeah, so as you can see, I got, you know, slightly, you know, chunkier grind here. All right, let's see if I can make your screen larger. Where the heck is it? Here we go. Okay, yes. So a slightly chunkier grind on there. Okay. All right, yes, mine is finer than that, but... I'm going to try one that way because I have a different grinder that I think would be better for what you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. I also, I don't like those grinders that collect the keef. You know, um, I want the keef in my joint. <laughs> I don't need it dropping down into some separate container. When I, with a two piece grinder, I grind, I tap. And again, it's also those trichomes. I want them in the joint. I don't need to save them for later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to smoke yeah. them now. It's part of this flower. So I have the the grinder that has a funnel on the end of it. And so the 
you know, it just gets a crazy coating on this um, plastic cylinder. Mm-hmm. And so um, like last night where I'm like ground something and nothing's falling out, I just open it up and take like a toothpick. And then it's just like I have a Keef bowl. It's just, it's going to nice. be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely. So are you a crutch or first, no crutch? Keith bowl's not for the first thing in the morning, by the way. That's a late, that's the end of the day, early evening thing. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's my re day. for recap. Yes. <laughs> for sure. What was your question? Um, are you crutch user or no crutch user? I'm a no crutch user. Um, I find, and I've, and I've tried with and without, and I've tried different types of crutches, both paper and ceramic and glass. I find that the crutch improves the airflow, but more so than I'd like. Um, and we'll get into airflow here in a minute when we, when we spark up. But um, I, I don't, I like a slightly constricted airflow. I don't want it to be too free flowing. Um, I find yes, that hot air. It's like a freight train. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not going to use this crutch today then. I'm going to try it without then because sometimes I'm like, whoa, you know, it's just a little too hot. Right, and that can yeah. and it can burn your throat, and irritate your throat a little bit, and I'm not mm-hmm. a fan of that. So, yeah, and also I can I can taste the paper, believe it or not, <laughs> as well in the crutch, and I don't I don't want to taste anything but my cannabis. Yes, I can appreciate that, and your so palate see- is a little bit more impressive um, than mine. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go so to far work through the flavors, you know, and so. I can tell if there's too much paper because it just feels harsh, but I don't necessarily know that I taste it. Sure. You know, it's just about, it's about training your palate over time. And that's one of the main things that we go through in the Gangier program is guiding our students how to train their palate. Um, we have a, we have a 40 page article in, uh, in one of our 10 courses online that was written by uh, Madame Cannoli, Frenchie Cannoli's wife. And she goes into the science of flavor and the lexicon of taste. She talks about the relationship between the olfactory and the taste buds um, and having the differences between nose smelling and mouth smelling um, and goes through some very specific techniques on how to uh, educate the palate. Yeah, I appreciate that. So um, what is what is one of the best rolling tips that you have for a newbie? Uh, Excuse me real quick because my computer says it's about to die, but that's because this charger strip isn't turned on. So like um, you keep talking, I can hear you. You fix it. <laughs> okay. Um, one of my favorite tips is to create a little tray in the paper uh, to hold the cannabis and to help stabilize the paper. So I create a tray by folding it. First I fold my paper in half, and then I fold that bottom half in half again, up to the midway point, like that. Okay. Okay. And what that does is that creates this little tray with those little folds in it. And the little folds help give that paper some additional stability. I need additional stability because I'm going to stuff this paper full with cannabis. And uh, when that weight hits on here, you know, if it's, if it's not stable, I can, sometimes it just falls right off. Yeah. And I need additional stability too, for more than that reason. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Okay. Sounds like there's a story there, Joe. Uh, we'll save that for another discussion. There's always a story there. <laughs> oh, goodness. It ain't easy being in the cannabis business. <laughs> so the idea is to get as much cannabis into the paper as possible mm-hmm. so that you have the highest cannabis to paper ratio as possible. Again, that's all we really want to taste is the cannabis and not the paper. And if we just put in a little bit of cannabis and wrap that bunch of paper around it it's no good so yeah i uh, what i do my the other tip i do is i stack all of my cannabis my ground cannabis onto this rolling paper here onto this rolling paper package okay and i form it as the joint see it's already kind of preformed there so when i drop it into this paper that i folded 
it's practically, it's mostly ready to go. So now the paper is full. Mm -hmm. The fold holding it from falling over, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got quite a bit in there. So what I like to do now is because I have so much is I need to ease it in. So you'll see I have, uh, I'm cradling the, uh, the paper right now with my middle finger and my thumb. And I'm using my index finger on top here to kind of tamp it down. And I'll start at one end and then I'll move over to the other den, the other end and just kind of tamp it down with my index fingers. And once I feel it's kind of starting to fit in there, I'll take, I'll pull out the index finger. I will then use my thumb and middle finger that were cradling the paper the whole time. And I will then pinch the top edge to ease that cannabis in even just a little bit more. I pinch that edge, roll it a little, kind of ease it in with my thumb to really, again, get it all in there. Mind my ends, because sometimes as you're doing that, the ends want to start coming out. So I'll just kind of tap that stuff back in there. And then we'll pinch it in, just like I said, and push it down. And we'll get all that stuff to fit. I always have trouble when it gets to the tucking apart to start, you know. The tuck and roll. Yes. The any tuck tips, and roll. Any tips to master that? So what I like to do for the tuck and roll is, again, is I make sure it's prepped before I do it. So I'm really taking my time and to easing that cannabis down into the paper so that it's going to make that tuck easier. Okay, so let me show you how I prepped this leading up to that tuck and roll. See that bottom edge sits down just a little bit lower than that than that top back edge, the, the one mm -hmm. I'm going to lick, lead in with the glue, because that front edge there I'm going to end up tucking in. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start a little bit lower. And then I just kind of, I use my thumbs, hold my my thumbs together and I just kind of start cradling this back and forth slowly, easing in that cannabis in, rolling the top edge that's closest to me into the cannabis to begin that tucking. I'm almost pre-forming that paper, prepping it for that tuck and roll. It all, the paper almost starts to get a little curve to it and starts to hug the cannabis, especially if that cannabis is sticky. Mm -hmm. Then what I like to do is I get my fingers, once I feel everything's been prepped and I pre kind of tucked it a little bit there, I recenter my tips of my index finger and tips of my thumbs are touching. I roll back with the thumb, starting from the center, roll back. And then as I'm rolling up, I'm using those thumbs to tuck in and then roll outwards with my thumbs. Okay, it's the tip of my thumbs that start, but by the end as I'm rolling outwards, it's more I'm rolling out to the knuckle to kind of hold <laughs> all that stuff in. Okay, I've never tried to roll a joint this like slow while I'm I know me literally either. It's listening, and so yeah. I'm like, I keep losing everything. Oh, right. yeah, I almost lost it a few times myself just trying to go real slow and show everybody. Um, ideally, you don't do it that slowly. Yeah. I was just doing it for demonstration purposes. Um, but it's just like I said, it's just you roll back a couple times, use that thumb to kind of pre-tuck it in. Then you center up like I did, yes. get those tips to tuck it in and kind of use your the, the, the edge of your thumb to kind of catch it. All right. I just dumped it all out. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes that'll happen. And so I mean, there's no, there's there's no a, downside to get There's some a little practice. flower log on my tray. On my Blazy Susan here. That's a great sign. That means it's some nice sticky cannabis you're working with there, Joe. Okay. So um, your first class of Gongiers uh, recently graduated, correct? So uh, we opened enrollment last, uh, last year, about a year ago. Uh, we have about 200 students going through our full certification pathway. And I'm happy to say, uh, so we do monthly live training sessions and monthly exams. And so just last week, 
we had our third exam session. We keep our sessions super small. So while we have 200 students going through the program right now, um, we keep our live training session and exams um, to 20 students or under, um, with as many as four instructors at each session. So I'm proud to say after three exam sessions, we now have 36 certified Gangiers on the planet. Very nice. Very nice. Now, did the people who are teaching the program, did you go ahead and get certified Gangier as well while you were at it? So we all decided um, early on in the, in the development of the program that none of the 18 experts involved was a certified Gangier just yet. No one would get a free pass. No one would be grandfathered in. Um, and so, yes, any of the council members that wishes to become a certified Gangier must go through the same process as every other student. Um, I'm the first one to go through the process and I'm the first uh, council member to be a certified Gangier as of today. I, yay! I yay. do know that uh, Nick Ati, uh, Professor Nick Tanum, is actively studying uh, and will likely be certified at our next round of exams in about two weeks. Um, yeah, I know Aaron is also studying and wants to do it, and Wendy as well, uh, Wendy Kornberg. Very nice. Well, that's yeah. a lot of fun, and it's also a fun little uh, internal challenge. <laughs> it is. It is, for sure. Um, you know, we, we realized that no one expert in the room had the knowledge of every other expert that was involved in the development. We had the scientist that knew much more about scientists than the cultivator did. Jeff Raber knew more about science than Swami. Oh, hey, look at that. So this is my, I just pinched it off. Is that what you do? Um, so, when I've, you know, with, with lots of practice and minding those ends, like I showed, you can kind of, you can get it. Oh, yeah. Right down to the ends and get it nice and just even right. from end to end. However, when I, I always do have paper. Uh, what, what, what you could do is you could use a little scissors or a cigar nipper mm -hmm. to nip the ends for a nice clean finish to and to open up those uh, twisted ends you did. That's another little tool I recommend is, uh, you know, a cigar nipper. Okay. If, if you've ever smoked a joint and you get halfway through and that end start that you're hitting on gets too gummed up and you can't draw through it anymore, mm -hmm. okay, use a little nipper or scissors. You could nip off just maybe an eighth or quarter of an inch. Yes. And it'll open it back up again. That is, that's the hot tip I'm looking for. Yeah. There you go. We got I them. Dig it. <laughs> now, um, I typically just like burn off the the little top and pull, pull the paper off. That was something another one of my friends taught me on this program. The um, witch's hat trick. They're, but, they're that one. well, yeah, I guess just kind of. You catch the edges there. Uh huh. Just and scorch the edges the and, and pull the top off. But the they nippers. They call that the witch's hat. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> the nippers seem like a faster, um, less dangerous option. They are, and it, and it makes for a nice, clean, finished end. Um, and for those, you know, tool nuts like myself, mm -hmm. it's just another opportunity to add another tool to the collection. Yeah. Regimen. Yeah. All right. Do you use Hempwick? How do you light yours like a Gangier? So speaking of tools, I got a couple tools here I'd like to show. Um, one is my um, antique finger ring cigarette holder. I love it. I have okay. mine in my purse. And so uh, I like to clip up my joint with that. You know, I do have something makeshift here in the studio that I can use. Another hole, please. Yeah. Get your tools in order. This is a little note holder that will work just fine. Oh, perfect. It's like the roach clip I used to find at my mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in my hair like I was a Indian princess or something. <laughs> yeah, it was the before or after you smoked. hanging down from it, I loved it. <laughs> um, so I like to light my joint with matches. 
I no longer use fuel in my uh, joint lighting regimen. I can now taste the fuel. Um, so I have this antique, another excuse for a tool. Um, I have this antique match holder, match safe. Uh -huh. And I have these strike anywhere matches I like to use. And then just like the uh, cigar smokers, and just for the same reasons, I like to toast my joint when I light it. I don't want to draw the flame in along with any soot or any contaminants, such as the flavor of the fuel. So I toast just the end, the very end of this. If it catches fire, you could just let it go like that. Sometimes it takes more than one match to get it going, but that's okay. I enjoy the ritual and the process, taking my time and enjoying myself. I dig it. So another, so other than not drawing in, you know, a fuel contaminant or soot, um, you're also regulating the heat. You really want to regulate the heat when you're smoking a joint. You don't want a big cherry and you don't want to draw a lot of heat through the joint because you can pre-vaporize a lot of those compounds. That's all vaporizing is, right? Is getting the cannabis up to a temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one's going to take a third match. Like I said, this was freshly harvested. <laughs> I like that you're having your inaugural inaugural smoke with me. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Usually it doesn't take me three matches, but like I said, this one's still a little bit wet. I like to be careful. I and like then, this. Uh, this feels like a Gangier roll joint. I got to say, I appreciate the care. Yeah, it's about taking our time and enjoying the experience. It's really what it comes down to. There we go. I think we got it this time. Well, ma the majority of the time when I go to light up or have a sesh, it's like my medicine. I need, I, I want it. I need it. You know, it's not just like I'm wanting to get super blazed. And so, yeah, there is this kind of rich ritual kind of gratitude aspect to be like, oh, I'm going to just take a few minutes do something for myself, you know, turn on my creative brain, turn off the monkey mind kind of a thing. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of rushing around these days in life. And, um, this is something I enjoy much too much to, uh, to rush through it. This is, this is my time. This is my time to, uh, to reflect, medicate, and really uh, pay attention to what's going on here. Pay attention to those aromas and the flavors. So one of the things that I'm curious about is if you are trying to train your palate to be able to, um, you know, use your nose and your, you know, your mouth feel to like really understand what you're smoking and to like really try to parse out the flavors what are some things that you do to like start training that in yourself? So, um, along with the council, the Ganjie council, we developed what we're calling the systematic assessment protocol. And we developed it into a form of an app and it walks you through, uh, the four criteria that we assess appearance, aroma, flavor, and experience. And then there's the individual criteria within each of these category um, and the process itself, the assessment protocol that we've developed, it kind of, it, it kind of helps you and guides you in paying closer attention to the finer details. So for example, you asked about flavor, you know, when it comes to flavor, went out on me, when it comes to flavor, there's, you know, um, longevity of flavor. How long does that flavor linger on your palate? There's intensity of flavor. How strong was that flavor? Was it subtle? Was it really powerful? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then there's complexity. 
Was it singularly lemon or was lemon with some fuel notes with maybe some crushed pine needles under that? So now it's layered, becoming even more complex with each successive layer involved. Mm -hmm. So that's how you train your palate is by paying attention to these finer details. And again, that's one of the things we, uh, that we go into uh, great detail on uh, in the Ganjie program. Well, and as you say that, you know, one of the things I've recently been doing was writing down how my body feels because I've been testing out some different um, products and CBD and, you know, cannabigerol and CBN and, and trying to find the right mix of cannabinoids for, you know, my aches and pains and stuff. And just the process of writing down how you feel, if you hurt, where it hurts, what the sensation is like. Like I hadn't done those things before, but it definitely did have me um, way more aware and in tune with my body. So I can imagine by doing this, um, I will get a little bit more in tune with what the th the things that I'm smelling because right now I'm like, oh yeah, that's really fruity or that's really gassy, but I can't parse out more nuance than that, you know? And of course I also broke my nose and I can barely wow. breathe through my left nostril. Oh, no. So. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but to your point, be mindful of the experience. Okay. When you're mindful of the experience and you're paying attention and you're taking notes, it's, um, it's different than just hanging out for social and just getting high and having a good time, which I'm all for. Believe me, I love doing that. Yeah, it is um, Friday. Yeah. Um, but the Ganjie program, it's a professional trade certification. And so our assessment protocol, um, you know, it's a professional tool um, that with all professional tools, you need to be trained how to properly use it. Yeah. Well, I love what you're doing. If people wanted to sign up for the Gangier program, where do they go? How do they how do they get on the list? Um, enrollment is currently open, and anyone can go to gangier.com. G a n j i e r. Gangier.com. We um, I'm proud to say that we're offering uh, scholarships this year. We're offering uh, 17 scholarships. Actually, five percent of our seats available next year. Um, they're 50% tuition scholarships uh, available specifically to those who were impacted by the war on drugs. Um, that's awesome. Way to go. Thank you very much for doing cool stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'm just now looking over in the comments. I have, I wasn't paying attention. I was just so engrossed in our conversation. Any questions? Um, well, if you go to the right of your screen on the top there's a comments bar. Maybe we could read them, look through them together. Oh I mean, shit, you're really far away. Okay, yeah. I, I had to minimize. I had to minimize. Yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead and read them. Go ahead and read them off for me if you don't mind. Um, let's so. see. Um, I could minimize my screen, but then I'd be squinting just to see what's over there. <laughs> okay, a lot of this is just like you know chat gibberish when people are talking. There's like so much from two people it's overwhelmed my eyes okay they must be having a good time yeah they're telling stories i assume you're all talking to each other if you have a question for us always just start it with a cue and then i can find you but um but thank you oh somebody says they love our channel and they love both of us so yay yeah. <laughs> No gibberish from you. That's right, Sean Walton. No gibberish from you. Um, all right. Well, Derek, thank you so much for rolling with me. And um, if anyone out there wants to roll with me on an episode, if you've got mad rolling skills and I need to know something about it, you can send an email to ask at casuallybaked.com or message me on social at casuallybaked. And um you can perhaps join me on the next episode of Roll With Me. And um, go to ocbusa.com backslash baked if you would like four booklets of OCB rolling papers and a rolling tray for only $4.99. I mean, Christmas is around the corner. That has stocking stuff written all over it. So, uh, Derek, thank you for your time and uh, for teaching me how to roll like a gangier. 
And uh, I will see y'all on the next episode. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me, Joe. Let's do this again sometime. Yes. Yeah.